Champions, the Syndra and the Aurelian Soul, which, you know, Crown has not really shown on. So they're definitely looking to focus on that area. Xiaohu did show that one game on Aurelian Soul and uh, not going to be the option for them here. But also with two jungle bands, uh, you would expect the Elise and the Rek'Sai to uh, be traded. Yeah, you certainly would. Or we've seen MLX already go towards the Olaf. If they go and early pick Elise, maybe you try and out-tempo with the Olaf. Very quick farm and also jungles quite well at six against it. Here's the thing about Olaf. Like, I really do love the champion. I think it is very good, especially in the early game. But a lot of the teams don't realize that the threat of Olaf in the late game pretty much comes entirely from extra speed boost on the team. Like, Olaf is a champion that when you pop your ultimate, yes, you are immune to crowd control, but you need extra speed to have that threat on the back line. You know, you need a Sivir or a Karma. Karma's already banned out, so that would kind of, you know, diminish the options uh, for the rest of your champion pool. And the ultimate is kind of a double-edged sword because you need it for the breaking CC, but you also need it for the AD to assassinate that AD carry. Exactly. Like, that's why the champion can look very, very good and very, very bad. I still think it is, you know, there are proper uses for it and I think it can be used well but we will wait to see till the uh, pick ban fills out here as the Caitlyn extremely high priority for a lot of those bot lines you said you know a lot of the bot lines are focusing on you know winning in the CS and the Caitlyn traps have also been a huge asset surrounding the objectives and that's going to allow Samsung Galaxy to maintain any sort of advantage they get early game it is a rumble Rek'Sai combination here for RNG not going to be the Elise or the Olaf that we're talking about a lot very quick lock-ins Olaf and Victor for Samsung Galaxy so starting to see the team compositions pulling together now Sha who's played against Victor very often that's a big pick in the LPL and it's also one of his big picks not surprised that they get insta locks off the back end of this because they do value the Malza high incredibly high, as well as the Ezreal for Uzi. We've seen him play it once. It was an absolutely stellar game against Splice. So this lineup right now is rounding out well for RNG. My big concern is a Rumble pick, because when you do that, you force Kuve onto Kennen, and that has been his best <laughs> champion. Why are you forcing him onto it? Yeah, forcing him onto Kennen is an interesting way of putting it. Definitely really have, like, uh, the dedication that he had, you know, practicing a bunch in solo queue, putting in the time on that. And it's part of, a big part of why they're even here at Worlds in the first Ooh. place. Ooh. Now but this was there's banned. the ban, yeah, that we saw earlier. You know, maybe some of that scrim intel or uh, some of it got out, but the Zyra is picked up here. Talk about winning lane. Caitlyn and Zyra, one of the, the most annoying folk lanes down bottom. So much damage potential. But that is a gauntlet thrown from a very new AD carry support combo. And if he goes with Alistar, kill threat. If he goes with Nami, it's the same threat. Uh, there it is. This is actually what I want to see from both supports. Mata, if he locks in this Alistar, that's what we're talking about, the melee champions for RNG to be able to have that playmaking ability, especially with a uh, carry top lane or like the Rumble. Brum will do a very similar thing and, you know, has the zone control that you can match up with the Rumble. Both those ultimates, very good at fighting in the jungle. But Core JJ, let me just talk about this one more little time uh, spot. I see you trying to dab in, but... <laughs> Kiwi Kid is one of the original uh, <laughs> support Zyras this season. And Cortete did play a lot with Kiwi Kid very closely. He's seen firsthand the potential that this champion does have in the Dash bottom lane. said it earlier. It's that ex Dignitas talent showing up here. <laughs> well, that was props, dude. Come on. <laughs> Give um, credit where credit is One thing dude. I will say, if you did watch the Kiwi Kid game, in the end, he was like a six item mage pretty much running around the way we've seen Lecrit. Went full damage on this champion. I have to say. It is one of the funnest things to watch because it's very important to get bush control with that combo as well. Uh, as, as oppressive as it can seem at times, it can also fold very quickly. Uh, if MLXG gets down there very quickly, they're pushing up, they don't have you know all the spots warded, which is extremely difficult versus Rek'Sai, especially early on in the game uh, and being on that blue side. So I'm very, very... Very, very excited for that match. I think it is going to be the volatile lane, but you have to hit on Marta's Braum because Mako had an interview where he was like, Marta <laughs> yeah. can't play Braum in the lane. And everyone was like, why? And he was like, it's simple. He just can't hit the Q. I don't know what it is. He's great on all other skill shot champions, but the Braum Q just evades him. And I think that the only way you win this lane is hitting multiple Qs on Braum's, multiple poke on Ezreal, and then getting the Rek'Sai down there. Winning the lane versus Caitlyn Zyra, there's, those are very strong yep. words. The for only way. Exactly, because it's it's a risk. If you win the lane versus Caitlyn Zyra, it comes from Rek'Sai coming down and Braum going in with the Q flashes and hitting them. If he misses those, they die. And trust me, Mata and Uzi do not play to go equal in lane. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, we have our first support Zyra of Worlds 2016 in the hands of Samsung Galaxy on the cusp of qualifying for the quarterfinals. All that stands in their way is Uzi, Mata and the rest of RNG. But they've got very strong lanes here that could work out in their favor. We've heard time and time again, RNG do not play well from behind. They do not play well when they're under pressure, and there's a lot of champions to apply pressure. I think that is a very good point to bring up because week one, we were talking about RNG, and we were like, oh my goodness, the way they beat TSM, they were so much more controlled. They actually you know, backed off of losing scenarios, but today they have been very headstrong uh, and a little bit too risky. See if Samsung can actually punish them for that, though. The risk out of RNG's play is that they don't gracefully lose. They don't sit there and allow you to accumulate a gold lead. They're going to fight you. They build themselves back into game through very, very risky team fights, and that went the opposite way in game one versus Splice. See if they go out in a blaze of glory, or if they even it up and make the top half of this group, or top, actually just the entire group. <laughs> Look, if RNG win, Catch it remains fire. a three-horse race. There are so many multi uh, possibilities, but it still boils down to the remaining games and whether or not Splice will play spoiler. Samsung Galaxy want to avoid that. They just want to lock in that spot, guarantee at least a top eight seeds. All right, so as we've been, you know, really concentrated on the group and all the implications here as the day winds down, we did uh, have some early vision also placed here. This is incredibly important uh, for RNG because you expect the Olaf for the quickest clear to start on the blue for the extra mana and cooldown reduction, but he does have options. You don't have to start there. So they've confirmed this is top side blue start here from Ambition. And we were talking about MFG and the possibilities of his early influence. You know, that's where a lot of people fell in love with this jungler, right? Where the days of his red starts into level two ganks and uh, the very creative pass. So looking to see something special from him. A lot of poke already going down. Mata and Uzi on the back foot at early level, as to be expected in terms of this matchup, but, but Martin Uzi moving forward. It certainly is, but how patient can this duo be? Because you can see already they're walking back up and they get some return poke themselves. Braum is such a volatile lane, especially with that exhaust. If you jump onto a melee creep as the support wa walks up, you can get the exhaust down and get a lot of damage on. All right, there are a lot of tricks with Braum to try and make sure you land those cues. The bush control, jumping to the creeps for taxi, uh, cue flashing, making sure you get that auto in there. And they're going to have to bide their time you know, until they have that extra kill support because side lane uh, bush control is not going to be there in the early game. And there's always the chance that the enemy jungler, if you haven't seen them, are waiting. Look at the mid lane. Enemy jungler from Samsung Galaxy. This is MLXG waiting in the mid lane. Crown decides not to overextend. Here comes MLXG. Flash is available. Will they trade it? Shahu's going out. Malefic Visions is tagging for the damage. Now, hitting it away. you may think, why wasn't he more patient? And why did he go right at that moment? If you also watch uh, what RNG are trying to do there, the cannon minion just went down. So even though that gank resulted in no summoners, uh, or actually did result in a summoner, Ghost. the ghost was also blown, it also resulted in denying a cannon minion and a decent amount of uh, damage there on the crown. So that was a very successful gank, actually, in my book, even though it was not flashy. But at the end of the day, the investment is still quite high because now with the push in bottom lane, push in mid lane, you can pretty much invade if you are Ambition onto that blue buff, and you can see that they're going to contest right now. Yeah, if, if you look at their Ambition was just chased oh, out. Wow, deadly spines as well. Uzi chunked below 100 hit points. Ruler and Core JJ the ruining heal. Uzi's life. Summon heal as well. All right, there we go. We return to the invade here that Ambition had underway, does come away with it, has the level lead over MLXG as well, and they've got side on him as well. He's, he's, he's being hunted at the moment. But that's all off the back end of Mata going to try and help MLXG. I mean, it leaves Uzi alone behind the turret. They're good enough to punish. Now Ambition has complete control over the bottom side. MLXG's trying to push out mid, and that means bottom's wide open to a game. Well, going to be a lot of pressure on RNG if MLXG makes his way down. Wave is being pushed into Crown, and Ambition's still in the enemy jungle. Yeah, still pretty risky, as uh, even though MLXG was showing mid, he was applying pressure, because if you push up that mid lane with your mid laner, it forces Crown to see us at his turret, so that means if they went for the dive, it would just be the three versus two. Oh man, look He's at this wrap around, though. This is exactly what we talked about. Available. All in from the... Oh. He missed. He can't hit the Q. Set that up in lane. No slow, no CC to follow. Honestly, it still would be fairly risky even if they did hit it. This is a full summoner, Caitlyn Zyra duo. So 
everything does have to go perfectly for that to work uh, in the end anyways. And the, one of the worst things that would definitely blow up in the game is if you try and gank that powerful damage output of the Caitlyn Zyra and you mess up that gank this early on. But I feel it's worth the risk because there's 600 gold behind in a laning phase and you expect Uzi and Mata to win. So you have to be able to throw that out. Hit your cues then, bud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we've heard that he can't uh, from multiple sources. Uh, we caught a quick glimpse there of Looper in the top lane. Still sitting in lane 36 CS to 34 for Cuvay, approaching their ultimate status. And of course, that teleport is available for Looper, so he should be able to back. But look at the itemization differences. Yeah, so the big thing here is that they actually burn the teleport because they know that RNG wants to play around bottom lane. And with teleport, Echo has priority in this lane. So now Looper has to match, and now it becomes that war of attrition between the Echo and the Rumble. And this is a lane, you know, both melees here that can be tipped very heavily by the jungle. I just want to revisit Ambition because Ambition is a guy who's worked so diligently to get here. You know, after five years, finally at Worlds, he is crushing in the jungle matchup. Almost all of the gold lead is on Ambition, almost over 400 right now uh, in, a, in comparison to MXG, and he's two levels ahead. Olaf with ultimate, he can actually just crush right now. He's got Ghost ready, and any lane that gets pushed in or any lane that SSG have priority in, he can visit and go for a dive. Ambition also picked up an early pair of Lucidity Boots, going to get around, throw out even more Undertoes, potentially more Ragnaroks. Pressure on his side. But as it stands, none of those lanes are targets just yet. Uh, RNG under their towers. Got to be very, very careful. There we go. Now who's got the passive up. It's a 2 on 2 battle. Ambition going to keep running. Call of the Void silences him. Here comes Mata. That chair tags. Ambition's running for his life. Ghost and Ragnarok is up. Flash forward. Oh. Now the cross was too late. Show who's caught. Here comes Core JJ. Show who's running for his life. The Malefic Visions burning down Ambition. A flash forward. The loss is out. Crown with first blood. The final second of the Ragnarok actually breaks the tether, and that means that Xiao who comes up empty-handed. I, I I got no words for you there, Spawn. That was rushed from Xiao Hu, and it cost him his life. It cost him the first blood, but up top. And let's see who comes away worse for where. Looper threw down the equalizer, is about to overheat. Cube still got access to that chrono break and not gonna get needed. He's forced Looper away. No summoner spells blown. Advantage, Samsung Galaxy. Definitely costly mistake here. Let's I, have another look. It was a great punish, because Mata roams first, so they have advantage, but there is no reason to do that early. And Xiaohu pays the price for it here. It went over to Crown as well. Crown's victor, we just saw him be a hard carry for Samsung. He definitely has the confidence, and now he's got the gold to back it up. And this is what I'm talking about, the inability to lose the early game gracefully. That is a forced play. You can take the Ghost, you can take the ultimate, back away Scott Free, and reset up your gank off mid lane because you know the counter gank is much harder. Instead, they roll the dice, and now they're getting punished everywhere. I clenched, I clenched. A uh, <laughs> little bit of damage. BF sword for Ruler. Mata manages to escape with his life. No summoners. And Samsung Galaxy, plus 1,600 gold, got themselves first blood. Looking at those item differences, as if Uzi didn't have a tough enough time, now he's got Pickaxe Tia into a Zyra Kate BF, and he's going to lose his tower. Exactly. The Zyra support takes its toll. Constant pressure there. First blood, first turret, and SSG with a huge, huge lead here. They're just looking so clean and controlled. This is how Samsung Galaxy took Team Solo mid down in the early game. However, they did cause a few problems and a few mistakes in the mid game. So let's see if they've cleaned that up from earlier in the day. Ambition, gonna give MLXG a gentle love tap. But this has always been the problem playing against the Korean powerhouses. As soon as you make that one mistake, as soon as you give them the window into the game, they just run away with it because they are so disciplined and drilled that they don't make the same mistake back. We'll see whether Samsung Galaxy is one of that top tier because right now they are looking at it today. But mistakes have still been in their gameplay. And those mistakes are what RNG are going to be looking to punish. We're approaching 10 minutes. We've not really seen Looper get involved. He's down in CS. Teleport will be available very, very soon, as is that Equalizer. And he's been under quite a lot of pressure from QV, because every time we have caught glimpses, it's QV pushing the wave in. And you can see QV on your screen roaming towards the mid lane. Should run into MLXG shortly. It's going to be interesting to see whether they can play around Looper, because honestly, all tournament long, uh, Looper's kind of been on an island, and it's weird seeing him on Team Fighters on an <laughs> island because it doesn't really do all that much for them. Also, if we look across the side at, you know, 
transitioning into the team fight phase, what Looper is going to be playing against from SSG. Uh, Samsung have this Caitlyn Zyra combo. It's also very good at anti dive and dealing with melee carries. Zyra and Caitlyn have the possibility to chain so much CC. If you land one of the snares, you know, traps go down as well. Zyra ultimate also does a lot to against again. Oh, here we go, though. The dragon and they the... They want to fight. Teleport into the bottom lane. Looper's coming from the lane. Marta misses yet another check. Audio J sidesteps. Teleport from Cubay. He should be able to cut off Looper. They've already killed him, LXG. The dragon's secured by Samsung, and Looper's the next target. Looking at the minimap, Samsung won more. They're looking to run him down. Ambition doesn't get the undertow and Uzi. Forced to arcade Huge the ulti. way. Stand behind me, Marta yells, and RNG feel they can go forward. They're going to bite off more than they can chew. They've been routed. They've been killed. Uzi flashes for life. Cubase chasing for more. Xiaohu might be able to get away. Time winders up. Chrono breaks available. Phase dive. Cubase survives. Chrono oh. break backwards. Malefic Visions doesn't kill him. Samsung have everything. Samsung are absolutely routing RNG. They take the Drake. They take the kills. This game, now all they have to do is put the vision up. Uh, all right, let's take another look at this, though. Guys, he gets snared up there on the edge of the gravity field, I believe. But all of that fight speak it starts because a missed chair comes through, and now Loop is caught up, does the team thing, tries to ult the three members whilst he is dying to give the team a fighting chance. But honestly, this is just an overextension and a fantastic punish coming through from Samsung. 4JJ getting in there with the Zyra as well, and they chase him out of their own jungle. I mean, there are just so many snares you have to watch out for. This really does also make Crown's job a lot easier in the team fights. You know, with the Zyra uh, zone control in combination with uh, the Echo as well as Gravity Field from Victor, there are a lot of, you know, ground targeted spells that you're going to have to avoid for RNG to actually get inside. Samsung Galaxy have earned a 5,000 gold lead at 12 minutes. They're going to knock over the second tower if uncontested, but RNG figure they can at least defend this a little longer. They've pulled up support from both Xiaohu and MLXG. CoreJJ just used his flash offensively there to try and get the snare, and RNG are roaming up to try and punish, but they've been chased off again. Oh, Ambition playing with his life. Got Ragnarok up. No ghost just yet. Call of the Void going to do too much. Mata throws up the unbreakable. The rest of RNG, five-man party in the top lane, and Cube uncontested in the bottom. Look at the other two lanes. This is just really, really sloppy play coming out of RNG. All of a sudden, Rexa has to try and defend cross map. Mid lane has just been uncontested. Free farm, and RNG, they're getting desperate. They really are. Is it? Oh, Mata steps to the trumpet. It's Uzi, oh! the target. Hey! <laughs> Long range damage. Looper's coming in from the side lane. Cube gets a tower. This is coming apart at the seams. RNG have simply no reply to what Samsung are doing. Core JJ with the Dignitas flavor. Two kills on the support now. Able to land the double snare. They take the turret afterwards. And this is getting out of control. Yet they take the turret afterwards. This isn't getting out of control. This is out of control. I mean, everything has fallen apart for RNG right now. And they're uh -oh. still looking for Desiree plays. Oh, they really are. But fire beats grass and Korja J gets burned <laughs> down. Well He's played, in the Pokemon jungle. Master. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, just a little overstep. However, because RNG went to kill Korja J, it allows Samson to take their fourth tower at 14 minutes, extending that lead. This might just be the biggest lead that we have seen all group stage long here in San Francisco. And this team, Samsung, look like they're going to top the group here with the last couple performances that they've had. Uh, very impressive play from them, especially Crown on the victor. I feel like teams will be targeting that later. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this game is the top of the group, right? Because as soon as they beat this, they have the head-to-head -head against TSM already. Yep. No one else can really get up there and contest it. And RNG right now, I mean, they peak earlier, but they're so far behind that the later this game goes, I mean, the Zyra is going to become a legitimate threat. Caitlyn is just so safe in these team fights. We've already seen the victor. Honestly, like, the door has shut very quickly for RNG this game. Especially if you consider that Samsung want to fight, you know, in these corridors where they can take full advantage of the parallel convergence, the gravity field, and the Zyra snares. They're moving the fight up into the jungle. They're taking it to RNG's side of the map. They've got so much vision control now. They would love it if they can catch RNG, you know, walking through those. The thing they do have to watch out for, though, is that if you're in the jungle, Rumble Ultimate and Braum Ultimate, still very good line combination spells there that can turn a game around if 
you're not careful. This one, though, 8,000 gold. Usually you have to take that account when you're talking about turning it around, and Samsung look like they've got that I mean, under control. Samsung would have to stand five men on top of a Glacial Fisher Equalizer combo to uh, have that 8,000 gold I've lead seen eroded. It. eroded. <laughs> but the way Samsung Galaxy have been playing throughout the course of this game and their game earlier today, it is just fantastic progression from week one to week two in Spawn. I want to talk about their prospects going forward after this fight. MLXG flashes forward onto Ruler. Ruler tries to 90 caliber away. There's no flash available. They get a kill. Remember, fire beats grass. Core JJ is strangled down. Looper takes him out in RNG. They don't need a jungle, they just TP in for two. And I mean, sure, this looks great. Two kills, unresponded, but still in the top lane. They're looking to set up for another turret. That's being chipped down by Kuve. Mid lane is still being pressured fiercely, and they can't get one back for themselves. Uh oh. oh. Found is ghosting for this. He's looking to chase. Decides not to uh, throw the flash down, just again, buying more time for Kuve to push top. This should mean Drake for, uh, for RNG if they stick around bottom, but. Uh, the double lane, solo lanes of pressure mean that they do have to go collect those minion waves. Here it is, they commit five people for this play. They do get two kills for themselves, which is definitely something to put in your pocket, but uh, so many summoner spells, uh, as well as losing out some damage on that mid and top turret. And here comes that Drake. Actually, it's just far too late. Yeah, the, the timing was a bit off. It was If it was 20 seconds earlier, yeah, they could combo it, but I feel like this is Samsung's now. And I mean, realistically, they want to combo it for gold. They don't even care about the Drake at this stage of the game. 7,000 is I mean, just such insurmountable. At this point, you'll take anything you get. You'll take a jungle on. camp. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no Can one I else get a small, small That's rapper? the problem. Samsung are so far ahead. They need to push their vision and their control so deep it allows for those double kills uh, plays to actually happen. Admittedly, that was just at the uh, first tier turret. But Samsung, they get their second ocean. That's a lot of uh, regents. They can back away from any Malzahar or Ezreal damage mm -hmm. that is landed. And the next Infernal will help Samsung, if they secure it, push to close this game out. All right. And I do this far too often, but the one bright side there is, is that Kuve didn't go tank first, he went Trinity Force, and the Olaf isn't as tanky as you would like him, resistant-wise. And there is some good damage items right now. If RNG find a window where it's a 3v5 or something like that, they can still blow a member up, but that window is going to close incredibly quickly. Also remember, they would have to do that multiple times to get back into this game. Also, it's very difficult to chase this because you're gonna have you're gonna run into laser after laser. The snares from Zyra and uh, Samsung would love to kite backwards. They don't have to use this Olaf forward. You can't run onto Samsung because you gotta get through Caitlyn traps. You gotta get through Zyra roots and ultimate. You gotta get through Victor's gravity field and Samsung. They're daring RNG to come at them. Just keeping the chip away at this inner turret. Looking at MLXG. No flash available. Looking to tunnel under a galaxy member. Ruler flashes away. Still gets knocked up. Equalizer's not great. Strangle Thorns blocks off any further engage. Royal are running for their lives. Ambition takes a lot of damage. But look at Chao. Yeah. He's being chunked down. Chaos Storm takes him out. Ace and Neil fired. So that's a cooldown blown. Look oh. at the damage onto Uzi with that last tick. Samsung get to phase dive the tower. They'll get the tower as well. And as Rusty says, this team loves to roll the dice, but it just is not coming up their number today because Samsung too good. Kite back, disengage the fight, and then re-engage at the perfect moment, taking down multiple members and getting the objective. It's so difficult for RNG because they can't split push, they can't team fight. They just they have to hope for an error from Samsung, and they're not giving it to him. You can see constantly Caitlyn traps. Uh, all around the perimeter here. Great disengage there. That was an example of Core JJ with the Zyra ultimate. They were able to get him with the re-engage as well. And <laughs> Ambition even recalling right there around the other side of the wall. So no vision. Here it is, though. Yeah, so let's take another look at this. They feel if they hard engage, they can blow up one of the damage sources. But a good flash, good net, and then that big Zyra ultimate cutting off the entire zone that you want to chase through. And as soon as Kuve joins this fight, it's a 5v5. You need to back out. Exactly. I mean, the key there is our ultimate buys time for Teleport to come in. They even the odds. And Xiaohu forcing it a little. Uzi also, that's fairly uncharacteristic to see him, like, just kind of walk into enemy crowd control like that, I guess. But isn't that two games today now that Uzi's just been a little bit off his game? We expect a higher caliber of play yeah. for one of the world's best AD carries, especially when the back is against the wall. For RNG, a win here keeps the top uh, seed open. A lose here means that they're most likely going to be playing for second. 
Yeah, 100%. I mean, now the winner of the TSM RNG game is so important for the, how this group plays out. One more thing I want to point out about RNG. They're a big Desperation Baron team. They do have a Melzaha. Expect them to start that up at some point to try and claw their way back in. It means you have to run through choke points. It's not going to be effective. They're way too far behind, but that's generally how they lose games fast. Well, 20 minutes and five seconds on the clock when that Baron discussion started. Yep. That is how <laughs> far ahead Samsung are. This has been one of the, like, the most impressive stops. You know, it's, it's so coordinated, it's so well played by Samsung. Actually, at 15 minutes, Samsung had the largest lead of all the games at World that we've seen. Uh, this world so far. So this was the largest early game lead of any team thus far. And unless I'm horribly mistaken, Samsung was a team that was not projected by many to get out. That's a lot of damage onto Xiaohu. MLXG's caught out. Strangle Thorns not going to knock anybody out, but the run forward. Chaos Storm Tick and Crown gets one more laser. That gets the kill in MLXG. But look how respectful Crown is. I mean, a little bit of a turnaround. Sorry, hold on. Cuba is not respectful. He's inside the base of Royal. The Crown burns double summoner spells to just disengage that slightly, lets the Olaf run it down. This is incredibly disciplined play. And at 21 minutes in, it's going to meet a Baron. Uh, gonna, Very uh, likely, unless Uzi gets a miracle as we go. That miracle, would be blind. Miracle, this will be miracle. blind. Will it happen? Will it happen? No, it okay. will not. Samsung, clean, clean Baron. 14,000 gold. Definitely true. That's how you do it. Pick off the jungler, have a pink ward and sweeper inside of the Baron. Make sure there's no vision inside, and they're able to take it without RNG. And this is what I mean. Shahu, he burns one summoner spell, burns it late. Straight away, Crown is out of there, then he's following up. Yeah, unlucky there for MLXG. Uh, Rock walks into the ultimate that was already sitting there from Crown, and that is going to be a... The quickest Baron of Worlds 2016. So... The quickest the everything. The largest 15-minute gold lead. The earliest Baron at 21 minutes, 15 seconds. Now we need to see if they can close the game out um, as efficiently and quickly, because they have Baron, they have the tool. They even have the option to go under tower, thanks to the amount of disengage they have, though obviously it, it uh, increases the risk factor against the Malzahar Rumble combination. And the tank items have come in now. I mean, double Spirit Visage, now you're sitting on Giant's Belt as well for the Olaf. He can run underneath that turret with the ulti. There's no way you can really keep him out. And honestly, the raw damage numbers that is going to follow up. I mean, poor JJ is arguably stronger than Looper at this stage of the game. <laughs> it's just going to be so uh, hard. <laughs> All right, listen, gentlemen, I'm, uh, I've got a bit of a head for numbers now. The timer for pole position for fastest game at Worlds is uh -huh. 25 minutes. 32 seconds. So they need to get 25 31 to set the fastest game. And that was RNG stomping splice. On your marks. That's it. That's the timer that we're looking for. Keep your eye on the top screen. Samsung Galaxy sieging three lanes at once with Baron. And they're on track to beat that record if go. they can survive the fight. Strangle Thorns gonna knock up three. That's a dead Xiaohu. MLXG's gonna get killed. Here comes Cubay from the side. Not gonna get a stun up, but Ambition from behind. He's looking for Uzi. Oh. Ruler is gonna ace him the hole down. Looper gets the kill. Ambition is Ragnarokking and Ragnarolling. Oh. But Uzi survives with his life. The base is opened up. The rest of Samsung Galaxy, they take down the top tower. They take down the top inhibitor. They still have a minute and a half to beat the record. They're setting their sights on Nexus. What does this tell you about the Samsung Galaxy lineup? Able to, able to do what RNG, what they did to Splice and destroy them. They are doing it. The Nexus turrets are falling. There's no support from Royal. Never give up. And Samsung Galaxy win the fastest game of Worlds 2016. Not only the fastest, but the most impressive win all around from the world so far this year. A complete shellacking. I mean, they destroyed them this game. That was as one-sided of any game of League of Legends you will ever watch. And you can see it on Uzi's face. They had opportunities in the bottom lane specifically, but just could not get it done. What has happened to Xiaohu? At MSI, he was so good, had so many strong moments, but he was absolutely destroyed this game. Give Samsung Galaxy their best champions. Allow them to play. I mean, that Zyra was a surprise. TSM knew about it. TSM had it prepped, got rid of that from the play. Uzi and Martin but never had a lost. chance. Never had a chance. I mean, when you have a look at it, 
Uzi and Marta go away from comfort, uh, comfort, they lock in the Braum. We've already said Marta's Braum is not great, specifically in lane. Alistar is up. Alistar Rek'Sai combos ganks so incredibly well, but they try and play for the later stages of the game, and another Chinese team gets punished for it. If that exact play that we saw down bottom, if he was on Alistar instead of the Braum, that was a, that was a guaranteed engage. There's no, there's no way that you... Well, I guess they could flash the... Yeah. Head but then ball. Rek'Sai follows up. I completely agree. You flash yeah. one, the next person follows up. Realistically, they should have gone for the play regardless, even when...